we um yesterday was a bad day today's going to be a bad day and um but I can do this um yesterday that's the reality of farming that's what land, land to skate is yesterday and Fortunately, during morning chores, um, Eddie, our bottle lamb, was discovered to have been mauled by two of our livestock guardian dogs, Remington and Freya. Um, they were the puppies of our older two uh, livestock guardian dogs, Waylon and Maple. Who are amazing. I mean... Remington and Freya were amazing. They were with the sheep from Every the day. day that they were born. Um, and we have no idea why this happened. Eddie wasn't remotely weak. Um, there wasn't about, we it just wasn't don't about, know. It wasn't about food. They have, the dogs hadn't been fed yet, so it wasn't like a resource guarding thing. But we, we were hoping it was a coyote thing and the dogs just weren't brave enough to deal with it but there's there was yeah, no signs of jack, coyotes getting in jack looked extensively for signs of in we have guardian dogs because we have a terrible coyote population problem in M michigan um particularly where we live with like the woods and things and and we have incredible fences be because of the coyote problem they're our primary predator um and fences alone would protect them from the coyotes because we go like a foot down into the ground and um, coyotes don't really climb fences. But without dogs with the flock, especially at Luke's house, which is so I'm, wooded, I'm my pastures are pretty open, but particularly at Luke's house, they're surrounded by woods. Um, the coyotes would terrorize the sheep in such a way that A, that's not what we're about we're about we love our sheep dearly but also um it would cause stress and and wool break and and trauma to the sheep so we have had like from day one even when mm -hmm. you had only three sheep luke had um right, Waylon, got and then maple and we have no idea why this happened it makes no sense at all it was in the middle of the pasture there was no sign of coyote footprints up to the fence or anything but regardless sometimes in farming shit just happens and despite the fact that i think all farmers go above and beyond to love and care for their livestock sometimes things just happen and um it happened to eddie yeah. which it would it would hurt badly for any of them, but if you remember, um, Luke and I saved Eddie. He, um, he and his um, twin they had a, a traumatic birth. Um, they were tangled, breech presenting twins, and it took us. Um, well, we even called the vet. It took us like mm -hmm. over and hour we thought we were going to have to do a terminal c-section on the mom and then finally literally we've never posted the pictures on the internet because it it looks as though we're harming the sheep but literally luke and i were both using our entire muscle to save lizzo their mom and, and get them out and we did and um she rejected him because he was the weaker of the two and this is what she, she particularly prey animals do because in the wild if you're weak you're a target except yesterday Eddie wasn't remote fucking weak and um anyway so he lit he was an orphan he was the only bottle lamb of this year's lambing um so he lived in in my house for three weeks and he rode around in the truck with Luke and he went to Rowan's school he was a therapy sheep post Oxford shooting and um so we loved him dearly mm -hmm. I mean we love him all but this was tough but we we took Eddie 
We, we called our vet. She, so God bless our vet. She's amazing. She, she, she dropped everything she was doing with her family to come and try to help Eddie. Um, it was above what she felt comfortable dealing with. So she sent us to Michigan State University to their uh, college vet that does this kind of stuff. And In Michigan, when you have big scale... Like that's the surgical center. That's that's where you take that's your animals lifestyle. when you have problems. So we, um, he was remarkably stable given the extent of his injuries, and um, we knew immediately that he would lose one of his um, back legs without going into the detail. Um, so we she cleaned the wounds as best she could. We gave them, um, immediately we gave them our pain meds that we give to sheep whenever they need them. And um, she, she um, put homoceptine or something silver. I, something. I don't remember. Our brains are fried. She, she, she dressed the wounds. Um, she dressed the wounds and, and we um, put them in the back of my new car and took them to Michigan State. He was doing remarkably well. I mean, I fed him a french fry when we went through McDonald's and he was happy and was rubbing his cheeks. Um, we took him to Michigan State and they sedated him so that they could clean up the extent. And at that point we suspected one of the dogs did it because he was covered in blood. And the other one we weren't real sure about because she didn't have as much. Um, but once they got him sedated and fully cleaned, the, um, the, the injuries were worse than we thought 80 percent of his body um it so, was it was what they considered to be a, a pack mauling so that both would be involved one with the hind end and the other one on top of the animal which explains why one had more blood on him than the other one did but uh the wounds were extensive it was bad and um the the vet gave us a choice of I mean, he was at the best place in the state and and they could try to treat him. And if he made it through and didn't die of infection, then they could amputate the leg. But there was a huge likelihood that he was going to lose both of his back legs. And, and if he made it, if, if he, he made, made it. it. Um, and and the deciding factor for us was that um, sheep have different lungs than us and it's not like they could put him in a um a uh medically induced coma and the reality was is that he was going to be in pain that we couldn't fix a lot of pain so that's that's where we go back to our foundation of for flock's sake we needed eddie and the right thing was to let him go because our sheep always come first. It's never been about the yarn. It's not. Um, and the reality was, is that we kind of, we let our emotions make us want to try because if it had been any other sheep, and it, despite the fact that we love them all, if it had been any other sheep, we would logically know immediately that the right thing to do was this probably wasn't a good prognosis and to euthanize him immediately. And um, what a study. despite wanting to do everything we could, um, we did the right thing. And that's what farming is. Um, but today's going to be a hard day. It gets even worse. Today's going to be a very hard day too. Because unfortunately, because... They pack mauled some of our livestock and they've gotten the taste of blood and are unpredictable because we had no idea this was coming. They were docile and they, 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 they love being with their sheep and I just don't understand it, but we can't rehome them to another farm because they can't be trusted with a livestock or, or with anybody else. They, they, they've lived with the sheep since they were born. It's, they aren't house dogs. They can't be trusted to go to someone's house. I can't rehome them. I, I, they can't go back with any of the other flock. They can't either. Luke and I have be belabored and um, we talked extensively with our, our vet and the behavioral 
people, um, we, we have to euthanize the two dogs today. Um, because the only other option would be to put them in um, a fenced area by themselves. Um, and that would be prison. And, and we, fuck first, the, our animal welfare matters more than anything. And it wouldn't be fair it, it, it would be prison, so today um, we're going to euthanize them because it's the only option we have. And it's, and it's not out of anger. It's not. No, definitely uh, not. Not as, not as like a punishment kind of thing. It's just simply, I, I, I have small kids. I can't, I can't trust that. They won't hurt my kids and the flock and. Reality is sometimes farming just fucking sucks. And a lot of times it's beautiful pictures. But it's also a lot of um, being brave and doing the thing you don't want because it's the right thing. Um, so yesterday was really bad. We spent the whole day at Michigan State and um, Today's not going to be awesome either. Um, but when we got into this, we thought it would, we were just going to be transparent and show you the reality of what um, raising American wool is like. And unfortunately, this is part of the deal. When you have livestock, sometimes you have dead stock, and sometimes that has to come at the responsibility of making the right choice. And I'm sure there will be people on the internet who question that choice, but until you've walked a day in these pastures in our shoes, you don't know what it means to have to sacrifice in that way. Um, but unfortunately, Eddie's gone and there's nothing we can do about it. Um, and that's that. It's the way it goes sometimes. So we're sorry to let you guys know, but like Sherry said, we want to be transparent with what we do on our farm and what happens on the farm and what it's like to raise livestock and the things that can happen. So. Thank you guys. Love you all. Thank you. Hey, Eddie. Was he so cute? He's so cute.